So you're thinking about having a pool installed in your backyard, but there's a bit of a slope. You're wondering, do I need a retaining wall? What's that gonna cost? What's it gonna be made of? What's the scope of the project for that gonna look like? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about on this episode of Two Minutes in the Pool. What's up guys, Christian here with River Pools, and today's episode of Two Minutes in the Pool, we're talking about retaining walls. We're gonna help you determine if one might be needed for your backyard, give you a little more insight before you get deep into your shopping and consultation with a project designer. If at the end of this video you found the information helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more educational pool content from us here at River Pools. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. First of all, most yards are not perfectly flat. A lot of times there's going to be some slope at least two feet from one end of the yard to the other. But there are situations where a yard is going to have a significant amount of slope. Meaning if you wanted a 40 foot pool that is uh, 16 feet wide, and within that amount of space of 16 feet the yard slopes four feet or more, well you're gonna have to do something to hold the earth either close to your home or on the other side of the pool. So, what is a retaining wall used for? Well, typically in backyards that have a significant amount of slope, a retaining wall would be used to actually hold the earth in place on one side of the pool or the other. We gotta get the yard level, we need to get the yard level so that the pool and the patio sit level, but sometimes there's a lot of earth that needs to be held in place so that the project comes together and the earth is held stable. So it's really a matter of how large of a wall is needed and then what's the design of that wall going to look like. Typically, if a wall over two feet in height is going to be needed, you're gonna need an engineer to design that to create the plans so that the wall is properly designed and built. What about material? What's a retaining wall made out of? Well, it could be made out of masonry material, meaning it's a poured concrete wall or it's made out of concrete block. Uh, and assembled with mortar, or it's a segmental wall, meaning it's supplied or built rather with concrete, uh, concrete blocks that are dry stacked and designed to lock to each other. How can you tell the difference at a glance? Well, you can pretty, get a pretty good sense by looking at a wall, whether it was poured with concrete and then faced with stone, or whether that wall was stacked up. If it looks like it was stacked and assembled by hand, chances are, it was, it's a segmental wall. You might also be wondering, can a retaining wall hold a water features? So could we use this retaining wall in a much more entertaining or decorative fashion? And the answer is yes. Oftentimes retaining walls can be disguised as benches or seats and be integrated into the landscape or gathering space in and around your patio. They could also integrate water features so that they don't just become the thing holding the earth back. They also could hold a cascade or waterfall that could be dumping into your pool making it a multifunctional element of your project. So now the really big question, how much does a retaining wall cost if it's needed for my project? Excellent question, and I know this is the one you really want the answer for. Well, it's really determined by the size and scope of a wall that's necessary, meaning how tall is it gonna to need to be and how long does it need to be? Obviously, the longer the wall, the more linear feet you have, the more cost there's going to be to have one installed. So this is a project, or this is a, um, an aspect of your project rather that needs to be determined by the professional building your pool. So you just need to have that conversation. We can tell you that homeowners who need retaining walls integrated into their pool projects typically spend seven to $20,000. Now, there is a low side of that and they certainly can go up. But now you have at least a range, you have an idea as to what that might cost if you think a retaining wall might be necessary to have a pool installed in your backyard. So have that conversation with the builder of your pool. Okay, so that's the quick one-on-one on retaining walls. I'm Christian with River Pools. You're a little pool wiser today, my friends. If you have questions, drop them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. We'll see you in the next episode of Two Minutes in the Pool.